Hi, I'm Jesper and I'm part of the ST TouchDFX team. In this video, I'll show you some of the basic features of the new static graph that has been added to TouchDFX 4.19. For this, I'll create a new uh, application, like this. To start us, I'll add a background. We'll just take a one color, single color box here. Make it uh, all white, and that's it. Then let me add a uh, static graph. You see we have a dynamic graph and a static graph. Um, here I add the static graph, since that is what I want to talk about. I'll expand it to fill up the entire display. As you might know from dynamic graph, the static graph has also a set of uh, of uh, grid lines uh, or uh, labels that you can put on the x and y axis. Uh, to, to use that, you have to make space for it. So a graph has a margin that you could put up. So uh, if we want the graph to be uh, having space for this, we could change these parameters like, uh, like this. So now we have the graph, so the lines of the graph in this position. And then let's see if we add some, some uh, grid lines like this. And we have the x-axis as well here. Then uh, all of a sudden our graph looks like this. Let's try just to compile, run the simulator, see that everything is as it is shown here on the canvas in the designer. Yes, so here's the application and it well, yeah, looks similar. <coughs> it has uh, some random uh, points inserted just as in, in, in this here, but you can disable that if you do not uh, want that to happen in a real application, of course. Just as for dynamic graph, you can uh, have a lot of options for grid lines and uh, the labels uh, to match your, uh, your needs, so you have for example, this interval. So if you do not want all these numbers to show up, oh, sorry, all these uh, grid lines to show up, you can you can change it to be each 40th instead. You have minor and major divisions of the grid lines, so you can you can add a second one. Let's change the color so we can see the difference. It has its own interval and so on. The reason why this is a minor is that if they coincide, so have the same x value in this case, then it is the major one that will be shown. The same goes for the labels, so uh, you can change them, you can set up the interval to match your need and uh, the way you want it to look, you can change the topography and, and uh, so on. Okay, so now we have our static graph. So let me explain to you what is a static graph, what is a dynamic graph, what is the difference. So to do that, uh, I'll show you the documentation side of the dynamic graph. So if I add a dynamic graph here, I have a link to uh, the web page of the documentation. So here you see a dynamic graph. So here is one way of the dynamic part of the graph. So in a dynamic graph, you add a point to the end of this graph, and these points are equally uh, divided on the x-axis. There are different ways the dynamic graph can behave. So if we scroll down here, uh, we see some example on the dynamic part. So this one just clears when it reaches the end. This one uh, like scrolls, and this one has this uh, this uh, fine line to to over when it overrides again. So that's the dynamic part of it. The static graph is, uh, as it says, a static, so the view is static. So you specify the range where you want to see this graph. So in this case, minus 100 to 100 in the x-axis and minus 100 to 100 in the y-axis. So the static graph is static, is static in the sense that it does not change the, the axis uh, or your view on the data set as you insert uh, points. 
So you can insert points, you can specify how many points you want to allocate for. So you have like, in this case, you have 100. So you can add 100 points. They do not need to be inside of this range. You can plot them outside and you will see the line go towards that uh, point. Um, you can later change the, uh, the view you have on this. So you can change what uh, part of the x-axis you see and what part of the y-axis uh, you see. You can override points in the data set. So if you have added a point, 0 0.10, if you later on add 0 0.11, the graph will update with this new, uh, overwrite the 10 and write 11 and then update the, the graph accordingly. An extra thing is that if you do not want integers on your, uh, on your uh, X and Y axis, you can set a position. So what position you want for your X axis uh, in this case. Um, and then when you enter numbers, it can be in this in this range. But for this example, I'll just leave them to be uh, integers. Okay, so let's try to uh, add some points to the graph. So for that, let me add a, a button. So let's make space for it. So let's do like uh, like this, Oops. like this, and then add a uh, a button over here like this, create an interaction. So when the button is clicked, this one, we will call a virtual function. Let's just say at point. Oops, and leave it with that. <clears throat> okay, so we generate the code. In this case, we also run the simulator just to see that Everything is as expected. We have a button, nothing happens, of course, yet. Okay, so uh, let's open the uh, files that has been generated, Oops. like this. And let's see it in, I use Visual Studio, of course you can use whatever editor you like. Okay, so I have my code here. I have screen one and here. So if I go to the view base class, we see my add point. We see all my elements that I put into the screen. So the graph is here. We can see it has the hundred data points and we see we have a lot of elements for the grid lines as such. We don't want to do anything with those. Uh, so let me just grab this function here and add it to uh, my view so that I can override it. I'll move it to the C file and I'm ready to implement. Okay, let's uh, try to add a uh, data point. So add data point like this. It either take floats or integers. In our case, let's just add an, uh, an integer. So uh, 2.5, that's it. If we want uh, a line to be shown, let's do like this. And then we try to compile and see if we will uh, add these uh, part when we press the button. Hopefully we will. saw a change here and that was probably our new two data points. One thing to notice is that you have a lot of uh, helper functions in a graph. So here if we uh, go to get, uh, there's a get graph uh, area padding range and so on. So if you want to know the range that the graph has right now, you can get it here, the max value for the x-axis and the minor um, a minimum value for the uh, x-axis as well. And the same for y. Uh, this can be used uh, if you want to normalize data points or something like that when you insert them into your, uh, your graph. All of this can, all of these functions can be shown in, or can be um, seen in the API for the graph uh, and also the 
the description of, of the static graph itself in the in the documentation. Okay, so you can play around yourself with adding uh, data points uh, to your graph. Or you can go to and have a look at the, st the static graph example, which inserts some random points whenever you press a button and so on. Final thing I would like to show you is uh, for um, some other interactions for the graph. So if you add an interaction here, uh, you can say when you click the graph, Then you can also have a function called here, graph clicked. Let's generate the code. Go here and see the base class. Now I have a graph clicked. Let's add that to my View and do something with this value here. Okay, so this uh, function is called when the graph is clicked. The value here contains an index, which is an index in the array of your data points. So from an index, you can do a lot of things. You can get the x value. So there's a method in the graph called uh, index to data point, where you can do the conversion. You can also get something like the screen coordinate if you want to put something on top of your graph like a like a circle or something where you have pressed so let me just show you how to to get a hold of it so if i include touch the effects uh, utilities like this i have the touch the effects printf method um so if I say press uh, why this let me show you so I can say graph uh, one dot uh, it's like uh, let me see index to screen X for example let's do that and then from the value I'll retrieve the index so the index where I pressed again so the point in my data in my array of data points or the index in the array of data points for the point where i pressed so if we go ahead and compile here we should see the output of the x coordinates in which i pressed or the point in the graph where i pressed closest to so like this so we have the console here uh, and you can see the number getting out of course, you can play around with all of this also. So get the index, convert it to an X value if you need that to get the X and the Y value, or you do like I did here to get the screen coordinate from where you press. Okay, so that concludes my short run through of the static graph for Touch the Effects 4.19. I hope that you'll try it out. Uh, play around with it and see what uh, kind of things you can do and what applications you can do with all of this. So thank you for listening. Bye bye.